Hello students, let us learn the importance of braille reading readiness. The beginning braille reader, like all beginning readers, must acquire the readiness skills associated with the actual reading process. The sighted children that have already learned to read print have mastered the reading process skills. But the visually impaired children must develop the skills associated with the reading using their fingers. All students learning to use braille must acquire certain skills which are prerequisites. Tactual discrimination is primary skill for braille reading. The ability to discriminate discrete tactual differences is essential to efficient braille reading. The noticeable shape or arrangement of dots is the most critical variable in braille reading. The teacher should not teach the child by teaching the dot numbers. This may be helpful to the person who reads braille with his eyes, but not for the tactile reader. Also, the teacher must avoid teaching the idea that some letters are reversible pairs. For example, R is reversed with a W. Finger dexterity is an another important skill. The effective braille reader will have curious fingers that move quickly with ease. Many readers use all four fingers of each hand. The speeds up the reading process by allowing the reader a view of a series of symbols rather than a single cell. Hand and finger movement. Most good braille readers use two hands. A skilled two-handed reader begins reading a line of braille by placing both hands at the beginning of a line. At approximately the middle of the line, the right hand continues to read to the end of the line while the left hand moves in the opposite direction to locate the beginning of the next line. The right hand finishes reading the first line. The left hand then reads the first words of the next line and the right hand quickly joins the left hand on the second line. Light finger touch. Beginning readers may have a heavy touch. However, to be a good two-hand readers, one must acquire light touch. Games may be created to help students develop a light touch. An example of an activity to encourage a light touch is to ask students to slide their fingers across a piece of paper without moving the paper. This takes practice and attention to task. In addition, the student's hand should move smoothly from left to right without stopping. Page turning. The student should be instructed to turn the page quickly with the right hand when the left hand cannot find another line. Incidental learning between sighted and visually impaired students. Sighted children develop and gain knowledge and experience through incidental learning. During their first few years of life, they have exposure to a vast range of visual symbols that convey meaning. They observe children and adults looking at print and gaining meaning from the words they read. Symbols are all around us in the environment and children experience them in many forms every day of their lives. Using signs, symbols and sounds to convey meaning and record knowledge is the basis for developing literacy skills. At 4 or 5 years old, when the sighted child starts the formal process of literacy, they have already learnt a great deal incidentally about the world around them to support their understanding of concepts. They start by understanding what objects are and move on to what they are called. They then learn about how they are represented on paper, the written word. The sequence is looking at the objects, tell the name of the object, see the picture and write the word. Thus the sequence is object, spoken word, picture and written word. The access to the literate environment does not occur naturally for the child with the visual impairment. They need the same exposure to the written word as print readers so that they can make the same connections and develop a concept of written language. Building a solid foundation of readiness skills and fun experiences from infancy is a critical part of the child's reading readiness as well as fostering a love of books. Our ultimate goal is to expose the child systematically and as early as possible and often as possible to a rich variety of concrete experiences involving many objects, people, places and activities which will support and build a foundation and enthusiasm for braille reading.
Once the child has experiences and language sufficient to read, a more structured reading program can be introduced. Let us now discuss the prerequisite for Braille reading. An important prerequisite that all readers must have to be efficient and read with comprehension is rich background of concrete experiences which involve many objects, people, places, activities and cause and effect relationship. In addition, the child must have expressive and receptive vocabulary that correspond to his experiences. Each individual child must develop auditory skills of identification, closure, sequence, memory for stories and auditory discrimination. The beginner must be able to concentrate, exert self-control and follow directions. Another important readiness factor is motivation. Once the student has experiences and language sufficient to read, he can begin a more structured reading program. The teacher will find that the number and quality of concrete experiences will vary from child to child. One should never assume that basic information or concrete concept is correctly understood until the child can demonstrate that he or she does understand. While both sighted and visually impaired children require language concepts, it is more time consuming to provide the experience required to teach the concept to the student without vision. It is important to provide experiences in a natural environment. Introducing Braille to tactile learners is important long before they start to learn literacy in a school setting. The child who needs Braille as their medium of learning will need to develop more unique skills. There are certain important areas of development to reading readiness. The multisensory approach to reading readiness helps to build concept development, motor skills development, auditory and tactile skill development. Most importantly, these strategies can help teachers help their child develop a love of reading. Let us discuss the multisensory approach to reading readiness. The multisensory approach includes auditory skills, motor skills, tactual skills, reading awareness, page turning, story skills and concept building. Basic concept skills are important for braille reading. Body and space awareness, body part awareness, basic concepts of up and down, top and bottom, over and under, front and back, left and right and near and far. Identifying objects, labeling the object, concepts of same and different, big and little, wide and narrow, thick and thin, hard and soft, empty and full, open and closed, heavy and light and few and many. Time awareness is about yesterday, today, tomorrow, earlier and late. Motor skills are upper body development, shoulder, arm, hand and finger strength. Hand strength is reaching, grasping, releasing and manipulating a variety of toys and materials. Development of fine motor skills. Fine motor skills need to be developed from the very beginning. The first important stage is the encouragement of gross motor movements leading to the later development of the fine motor skills. These skills needed in this area can be analyzed as wrist flexibility and finger dexterity, grasping skills, two-handed coordination, hand and finger strength, finger position, finger isolation, light touch and tracking skills. The development of these skills should be approached systematically and a series of activities devised to make sure that the child acquires these skills. Auditory development is another important readiness skill. The basis of literacy is an understanding of spoken language and the concept it represents. A child who echoes what they hear without genuinely linking words to meaning may enjoy early literacy experiences but will struggle to make sense of them. Learning to associate words with objects is an important step in the sequence of learning to listen and to comprehend spoken language. One of the starting points for this and a highly significant factor is skill in auditory discrimination developed from an early age. For the young baby or a child, learning to identify objects according to their sound is one of the first steps in auditory discrimination. For example, learning to identify mother by voice or first rattle by its sound. Sound, object or person 
plus opportunity to explore object associated with the sound should always be reinforced with a spoken word. We need to continue to develop the child's listening skills throughout the early years with the sound making toys and toys where actions result in a sound response. Some of the activities are opportunities to create sound with a range of objects from pan lids, wooden spoons, musical instruments. The child has to identify what object is making that sound. Sound matching and identification of tones that is if the sound is loud or soft, high or low. Locate the direction from where a sound comes. Developmental approach to tactile learning is an integrative approach. Integration of sequence of touch sensations which are given by an object when an individual explores it with his hands is often called the haptic sense. The child needs to develop this touch sensitivity which can be described as the ability to distinguish objects which are alike from those which are different. The most important principle in developing tactile readiness is to move from tactual discrimination of very gross patterns to tactual discrimination of very fine patterns such as braille dots through a series of small progressive sequential steps. The tactual discrimination of a braille cell requires a very special preliminary readiness program including the tactual discrimination of braille cell requires a very special preliminary readiness program including awareness and attention of textures, temperatures and other characteristics of 3D objects of hand size, discrimination of shape, size, weight and form, discrimination of smaller 3D objects and smaller 2D representations of shapes using a variety of materials and textures. Small objects and shapes positioned in rows on a page to represent braille lines, the child learns to track along lines of string, straws, ribbon, recognizing the odd one out. Discriminate and recognize braille characters, identifying the odd braille form out and tracking along lines of braille patterns. Reading awareness, book and story skills. In order to develop positive attitudes towards reading, the child requires tactual readiness materials just as seeing children need visual reading readiness materials. They need additional experiences in handling and exploring books. They need additional experiences in handling and exploring books with lots of opportunities to use tactile books as toys with the textures and sounds, real objects or representational objects to motivate them to explore and enjoy the story while being read to. As the child becomes more involved with understanding and listening to stories, simple tactile books can be used to encourage the link and understanding between the use of real object and 2D tactile representation, continuing to develop language to describe object, textures, shapes used in the books. This can be encouraged by asking them to find something different on each page of the tactile book. Example, to match the shape or textures in the book with the 3D or real object and this activity will help to support and develop their concept of what the tactile representation is and give meaning to the story. It's a good idea to make tactile books with a child by actively involving the child to find textures to represent each element or object, ensuring that tactile representation is meaningful to them. It is important to help them to develop a desire to read by reading aloud to them from the printed books. Having small amounts of braille on the book for the child to locate and feel them as the child is listening to the story and being encouraged to develop orientation skills. For example, identify parts of the book, cover, pages, margins, hold and turn pages from left to right, understand simple reading directions given by the teacher, example, top, bottom, left, right. Find specific shapes located at different points on each page as the child progresses through the book. Each page becomes little more complex with the addition of other shapes and textures. How do teachers create interest in child to read? Building a desire to read may require 
a considerable period of time for some children. Forcing the child to read before fostering a desire to read may cause a negative and damaging attitude which could lead to reading progress being adversely affected. Leading the child into reading by developing a classroom environment which makes the child to feel secure and which stimulates the child's desire to read is more likely to secure a successful beginning. The way the teachers guide the child reading is talk and write about everyday experiences, create child's own books, read with the child, use books with real objects, books with the tactile pictures, books with a variety of textures, books that can be acted out, books on tape, teachers won't record books, have braille available for incidental contact, favorite objects can be braille labeled, the braille books and magazines available to child in the home, engage the child in active participation of the story, create simple story boxes, story plays and tactile books. <coughs> Braille reading and writing mechanics. Braille reading and writing mechanics are another important readiness skills for efficient braille reading. The body posture is yet another prerequisite for braille reading. Appropriate finger position and finger coordination are essential aspects involved in braille mechanics. Reading surface should be of sufficient size to support the whole book and should be no higher than the elbow level of the reader. A reading surface above elbow level causes the child to hunch their shoulders or to spread elbows apart, thus pulling hands into a poor reading position. Both feet on floor, child's back against back of the chair, use both hands together on the braille line with the thumbs gently touching and the upper joints of the index fingers in light contact with each other. Wrist should neither be sat nor be humped. Coordinated use of both hands is characteristic of efficient braille reading. While the right hand completes one line, the left hand moves to the beginning of the next line to continue reading. The two hands then meet at some point, approaching the middle of the new line, separating towards the end of the line to perform their separate functions. Two hands that function together efficiently create the most efficient readers. Quick, smooth left hand movements are characteristics of efficient braille readers. For the sighted reader, visual perception occurs as the eye passes. For the braille reader, tactual perception is achieved through movement across the symbols. Braille is perceived through the pressure points within the surface of the finger pads. Hands are positioned to make the most efficient use of the finger pads on the reading surface to allow the pads to focus most of the attention on the upper part of the cell where the majority dots appear but also to span the entire three dot depth of the cell. The tips of eight fingers or at least the first three on the each hand should curve naturally and rest lightly on the one line enabling them to slide quickly and easily from left to right. The child should lift the fingers to return to the beginning of the line. A very light finger pressure is conducive to a good perception. A heavier finger pressure spreads the perception points and blurs the image. The teacher may demonstrate light pressure by placing the hands in the reading position and sliding along the child's arm. The teacher may ask the child to do the same along his or her arm to judge the child's pressure. Sweat fingers are indicative of too much pressure. As many fingers as possible should be utilized. Most children use the index finger or middle finger on one or both hands as the primary reading fingers. Other fingers serve to maintain orientation on the braille line to pick up the missed cues and correct faulty impressions or to move ahead perceiving punctuation or checking to make sure the line is completed. When relocating and moving to new reading line, the child should not be allowed to retrace the braille line from right to left. The retracing of the braille in reverse may lead to reversal problems. Locate and explore objects. One of the first steps in becoming independent and reaching out to the tactually explore the word is for students to attempt to reach out and locate objects. The facilitator may need to assist the student in developing an interest in locating objects. 
one primary way is to not retrieve objects for the student. If the student loses an object, provide sound source to help the student locate the object or touch the object to the student but encourage them to reach for and obtain the object. This is part of student beginning to understand object permanence. Encourage students to reach for and obtain an object that comes into contact with their body. As stated before, try to involve the student in the process of locating and obtaining objects. Students need to understand that object continues to exist even when they are not in contact. Locate partially or fully hidden objects. Help students explore their area and teach them that they can locate partially hidden objects. Play hide and seek games by partially hiding the objects. If students have difficulty, provide a sound source by the object to help the students locate it. Find objects after systematic searching using a search pattern to locate an object. Teach the student to use a pattern to locate materials. For example, starting in the top left hand corner and working in a zigzag pattern, moving to the right and left and up and down until they locate the object. Retrieve objects when placed in their usual location. Students should be oriented to the room and be instructed in where the materials are kept. Explore a variety of objects with hands. Provide factually interesting materials to encourage exploration. The importance of factual discrimination and finger sensitivity. When preparing for braille literacy, it is important to develop tactual discrimination skills and finger sensitivity. The development of tactual discrimination skills follows an order from larger to smaller that is smaller to the development of the hands and fingers. It begins with using the whole hand to explore objects and progresses to using fingers and fingertips to examine the details of tactile materials. Students with limited sensitivity in their fingers may not be good candidates for braille reading. There are a variety of diagnoses that can cause numbness or reduce the sensitivity in the fingers. This will be a factor to be determining if the student will be a candidate for formal braille instruction. Developing tactile discrimination and finger sensitivity, the teacher can help the development of the teacher can develop the development of tactile discrimination and finger sensitivity by providing many opportunities throughout the day for the student to tactually discriminate materials and compare similarities and differences, classify and sort. Many commercially produced classroom classification kits consist of molded plastic figures that all feel the same. These lack the variety of textures of real objects. Instead, use real materials wherever possible. Using real materials that support the current topic make these activities interesting for all students. Draw the student's attention to textures and describe textures. This will help the student become aware of their differences. The teachers can help the student develop finger sensitivity and refine their tactual discrimination skills by providing them with a variety of textures to match, sort and play with and explore. When selecting toys, choose toys that are tactually interesting. Throughout the activities, provide the student with a language that connects the experiences. Although real material should always be included in each unit, teachers may want to purchase commercially available textures, sorting materials to complement these activities. Thus, we understand from the lesson that pre-braille skills or readiness skills are physical and sensory. Tactile perception, fine motor skills, particularly finger and hand movements, cognitive skills and the ability to identify braille characters. Thank you. Thank you.